All right, in a moment of insanity, I just deleted this entire video that I just recorded, so um, I don't have the heart to do the entire thing again. Um, so I'm borrowing from some of the work I've already done, but I'll do the graphs from scratch so you guys see that happening. Um, okay, what I said here was that there are three ways of graphing any straight lines. So on last Wednesday's class, we talked about graphing lines with x and y intercepts using the slope and the y-intercept, or making a table of values. In these two equations, we are already given the equations in slope-intercept form. So the first thing we do to graph stuff is always rewrite it as an equation. So if we were to graph y equals negative 1 half x minus 8, that's the first equation, we start with a y-intercept of negative 8, which is down here, and then I have a slope of negative 1 half. So that means I go down one and to the right two. And then if I connect these two with a dashed line, because it's just greater than, my line will look like so. Now I pick a test point to figure out where to shade. I picked 0, 0, right here. So if you plug in 0 for y and 0 for x, uh, 0 is greater than negative 1 half times 0, but this just goes away because 0 times negative 1 half is 0, so that gives us 0 here. And then 0 minus the 8 would give us negative 8. 0 is indeed greater than negative 8, so this is a true statement. That means the origin is telling us the truth. We should go towards the origin because it gives us a true statement. So that means all of this gets an x. This is all telling us the truth. This is where all the solutions are. For the second line, y equals x plus 1, hopefully that's an easy one to, to graph. y-intercept is 1, and the slope is also 1, so you go up 1 and to the right 1. And this line is a solid line because it's greater than or equal to, so we make a solid line here and in the other direction. I forgot the arrowheads here. Now relative to that line, we can plug in the origin again, which I did right here. So if we take 0 and plug it in for y, and take 0 and plug it in for x, we end up with 0 is greater than or equal to 0 plus 1. Well, 0 plus 1 is just 1. So we end up with 0 is greater than or equal to 1. That is a false statement. That means the origin is telling me a lie, so I have to shade on the opposite side of that test point. So the origin is here, so I should shade on the other side of that line. So the circles would be all up and to the left. Now here, hopefully you can see that the overlap of the two circles and crosses are in this region. Um, so here you just have circles, here you just have crosses. That is not where the two regions overlap. The overlap is in the yellow bordered area. Now because this is going to get messy on the test, you have to give me all of this precisely, but then you also have to draw a miniature graph off to the side. And this just has to be a rough estimate of what you're seeing. So a solid line going to the right, um, a dashed line going to the left. And this is where the solutions are. So both of these, the, the miniature graph on the left, or somewhere on your page, the miniature graph plus the big precise graph should give me uh, an idea that you know this is where the solutions are. Not here and not here. For the next one, uh, these two are again in slope-intercept form already. So we can rewrite them as y equals 3x, 3 over 2x minus 7, and y equals negative x plus 3. So I can just use slope intercept, uh, slope and the y-intercept to graph these. So I start at negative 7, and then my slope is 3 halves. So I go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then to the right 2, so that's my second dot. And because this is less than or equal to, I have to make it a solid line. 
arrowheads to indicate that the line goes in, in that direction forever or in those directions forever. We can plug in the origin again, which is done right here. So we get three halves times zero, that just goes away to zero. Zero minus seven is negative seven. And we get zero is less than negative seven. That is a false statement. I'd rather have zero dollars than owe someone seven. So that means I have to shade on the other side of the origin. So that means this is where all the crosses live. And then for the other one, negative x plus 3, that one's not too bad. Y intercept of 3, uh, slope of negative 1, so down 1, right 1. And because this is, a, oops, because this is greater than with no equal to, it has to be a dashed line. So here, I make a dashed line going to the right and a dashed line going to the left. Again, we can pick the origin as our test point because the line doesn't go through it, which is done right here. We get zero is greater than three, which is another false statement. Zero is not greater than three, which means I have to shade on the other side of the origin. So this is where all the circles go. And hopefully you can see in this region is just the circles, in this region is just the crosses, in uh, this region, we have both circles and crosses. So the miniature graph you would need to draw is a solid line, dash line, solution. So that tells me that you know again where the solutions are.